guys, Cricket here. We're going to talk a little bit about the shoebox compressor, how I get my air. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. It's a two hour drive for me to get um, 4,500 PSI fill. So we're going to take just a look at the shoebox compressor, how it works, and uh, how well it's been working for me. So just to give you a little history on it, I got my shoebox compressor back on 3-28-2011. When I got it, I was probably using it once to twice a week to fill. I got an 88 cubic foot air hog tank. Um, we'll talk about that in a different video. Um, and I got a small shop compressor down there in the bottom. So if anybody's done any research on the shoebox, you can go to their site and find out you need a little shop compressor to feed the high pressure um, compressor. So anyways, my basic setup is uh, I got the mini shop compressor down below and then I got a coil of wires. We'll show you that. Or not a coil of wires, a coil of hose. We'll bring you in a little bit closer here. Basically, we'll start here. There's the little shop compressor, and there's roughly 25 feet of hose here wound up. And you can go with 50, 25. Use, a, use as much hose as you want, but use at least 25 feet of hose. And then I got a water separator here. Good news is, is I've never get any water in that separator. I run my intake at 90 PSI, or my input at 90 psi so I set this up to put out 90 psi air I hook that into the shoebox with the hose that delivers the air to it okay so now we come up on here and here we have two desiccant filters they turn from I think it's pink to blue right now they're a little bit purple they help take out more moisture and more um, dirt and grime and anything that may be getting in there so it's a secondary filter system it doesn't take a lot of moisture out so don't get you know overly excited that you're gonna make all your air dry so I'll put you back over here we can talk a little bit more now what I have is a coil in my line right here and that coil on my line is to catch any moisture that would possibly make it through and in summertime when it's hot and humid and even though I run a dehumidifier I got a really good sized dehumidifier that I run down here and it stays really pretty dry down here but not totally perfectly dry I will get a little bit of moisture in here if I could even fill a thimble up with it it'd be a miracle so First, I have the, I got the hose all curled. So first, you want to plug it in. So I'm hooking this up to my tank right now. There's no pressure, no nothing. You can hook it up to a gun too if you want. On the other end, there's just a foster fill, and this is just a double-ended nipple, so you can fill directly to a gun. I got a fan because I want to make sure it stays cool. Uh, see see my fan over there and I got the shoebox right here we'll give you a good look at that we'll turn it this way for a minute so what you want to do is every couple hours of run time you want to put grease on this white lithium grease they say don't use anything else I don't know I've only used white lithium grease I bought this tub when I got it put a little dab here and a little dab there and I just kind of smooth it all over. You don't want to over grease it. <clears throat> I'm going to wipe my hands off for a second here. They say you don't want to over grease it. I've been lubing up every fill, which it, I got an uh, 88 cubic foot tank. And I refill it at like 35, 3600 pounds, and I go up to 4500 pounds. I put exactly 4500 pounds in it every time. Um, 
I find that works out really good for me. I have some guns that fill at 3,600 pounds, so I like to keep it up at the top so I don't have never worry. And it usually takes about two, two and a half hours. So every couple hours, you want to put a little bit of lube on. Then I have a fan blowing on, blowing on the compression tubes because these guys over here heat up quite a bit. So. I think the fan makes a huge difference. They have this cover on, and now they're making models with fans and stuff in. It's got some venting and stuff on it, but not much air can get in there that can't cool down. It gets hot, and when things get hot, they, they wear out faster. So I leave this off. This is the original model. There's some newer models now. So, and also, I want to show you guys the shutoff on the original model is a little interesting. Right here is a spring, and it attaches to this this piece here, which moves back and forth, which hits on this lever. So you turn it on, and when it gets fuller and fuller, this actually moves forward and will turn the lever off. So I'm going to set you back and put that back together again. I find um, the shutoff on the original model to be super inconsistent. There's a little ring on the back that allows you to adjust the tension on the spring. I guess I should bring you in for that. Bring you all the way in here. Right there is a little set screw and on a collar and this just loosens up the set screw. It slides back and forth and it makes the spring tighter or looser. The tighter the spring is, the more tension it's got, the higher the fill pressure. Um, fill pressure is affected by input as well as that spring tension too. So the more input you put in, the more tension you need on the spring, I believe. So that affects everything. So anyhow, all right, we have the basic setup. We got the compressor full of air turned on. We got this hooked up. So now we want to hook up the air line down here. At this point, we want to open the valve. Let's see where we are. I'll swing you over that way a little bit. We want to open the valve on here to pressurize all this line in here. So open it just like you would for your gun. You're going to open it up slow. Just get the needle to start going. Let everything happen slow. You can see the pressure building up. The line's twisting a little bit. And it looks like it's a good time to fill because we're down to 3,600 pounds again. So, now that we got that done, we got everything pretty much ready to go. We're going to turn on the fan. And then we're going to hit the... Uh-oh, losing some paperwork. And then we would turn on the on the shoebox. Didn't plan for the fan thing there. Now you can hear the knocking. The knocking is that pressure or shutoff switch set up. You can override it by either putting a rubber band on or by just taking off the whole assembly. And however you want to do it, you can tie it back. But that's where the knocking comes from. And eventually it'll knock it all the way over far enough when the pressure builds up to shut it off. So I find I go by time a lot more than I go by it shutting it off. It will usually shut itself off and anywhere from 4200 PSI to 4500 PSI. Um, sometimes it'll shut itself off at you know 43, sometimes it'll be 41, sometimes it'll be 44. It's not real consistent. I've had it, um, I think, go up to 46 once on me. But I find it's best, you know, when you're filling, you do it on a day you're gonna be around and do it on the amount of time. The shoe box moves air really, really slow. You can see just a slight fluctuation in the air gauge as it's filling. Um, I don't know if it'll even show if I put it on camera, but we'll, we'll try to show you it a little bit. So anyhow, you turn it on, you come back two hours later. We'll do a before and after here. You guys can see 
we got roughly let's see how much we got in there yeah. we are at 3600 pounds the way it looks so I'm going to do a real close look at the shoe box I lube everything up in there there's a couple sliding parts and then there's the cylinders there's the chain um, after two years of having it, uh, I have yet to use any of my rebuild kits. I bought two rebuild kits when I got it. And like I said, I used it every day and every day, every week, at least once, if not twice a week when I first got it for the first year. I use it about every two weeks to three weeks now. Um, it comes with a nice manual. Tells you a little bit about the stuff. You know how it works, that sort of thing, how to lubricate it. So all in all, it it seems pretty decent. Um, it's got a vent on it. The vent works backwards, in my opinion. You screw it out to seal it, and you screw it in to vent it, which was kind of weird, in my opinion. But you know, that's what it does, and it works. So all in all, I've been really happy with the the shoe box. Um, I've had no water problems in my guns, no water in my tank, tried to get water out of everything, no water comes out of anything. It's made um, the PCP guns a lot of fun for me without it and having to go to a shop two hours away I'd probably be still shooting a Springer. I wouldn't be shooting nowhere near as much because I just enjoy the PCP a whole lot more. So we're gonna get to filling. We'll see if we can show you the pulsating fill. Take your bag over here again. I'm not sure if you're going to pick that up or not, but there's a slight pulsation. I'll give you a look at the unit. Alright guys, we'll check back with it again in about two and a half hours and we'll see the tank being full and then we'll be able to shoot. Anyways, I wanted to point out where you lube. Um, right here on the shaft is where you would put the lube. And then there's a little one on the bottom, then down in here, and then back in here. And that will keep all your bushings and everything real nice and clean. So. I wanted to show you that and this is the shutoff here that moves you can see that piece move so here's the switch if you wanted to take this switch and move it so it doesn't hit it no more or like I said you can put something on here to stop it it just keeps the clanking so here's the tank you can see we're not quite up to 4500 PSI yet but we would be soon enough I think it's been running like I said about two and a half hours so we're going to show you, we're going to do the, the, the taking the tank off part, make sure you can see what's going on. So what I always do, turn off the fan, I disconnect the tank, shut off my valve. I bleed the valve. I do that real slow. Well, I got all the way bled off. And I disconnect. times what I'll do is I'll plug the main line back in and then that'll you can hear it you can hear all the air coming through that'll get anything that's in there out as far as moisture or if there's a little bit of grease made it through it just cleans everything out
Then I keep a dust cap on everything. I got another little dust cap. These are just um, thread protectors that you can get at the hardware store. And that's it. That's all there is to it. We got air again, so we can go shoot. All right, guys. Till next time. You have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.